The following interview was conducted with Nicholas Goldsmith, president of the Queer Student Union for the Purdue University Oral History Program. It took place on Thursday, April 7, 2011 at Stewart Center. The interviewer is Catherine Marquis, the Oral History Librarian. Welcome, Nicholas, and thank you very much. I appreciate that. Tell us a little bit about where and when you were born and parents in early years. Okay. Well, I was born uh, just outside of D.C., oh, just outside of Washington, D.C., and Not on the Beltway, though, I don't think, right? No. no. I was born in a military base. So <laughs> oh, okay. my dad was active duty in the Air Force, and so they lived out there. And uh, he retired soon after that to go to be reserves in the military. And so they were only there for six months. So the first six months I was in D.C., which obviously I don't remember that. Um, and then we moved back to northern Indiana, which is where my family was from, um, and lived in Valparaiso until I was about four. Um, and so my grandparents are up there. Uh, my grandmother, um, maternal grandmother, lived in Portage. My paternal grandmother lived in Lake Station. And so okay. that gives you an idea. And then my dad was a machinist. And uh, the steel mills, they go up and down with the economy. And so he decided to. Uh, look for a more long-term stable job and so he got a job with Subaru and so we moved down here uh, when I was about four or five to Frankfurt Indiana okay. and so uh, moved down to Frankfurt Indiana and I managed to luckily get into preschool there at St. Matthews um, and during this time my mom was a stay-at-home mom and my dad was working at Subaru and then so I went to uh, Riley Elementary School, and when I was in second grade, uh, my parents decided that um, it was time for them to get a divorce, and so uh, they went through the divorce process. Um, they had my brother when... Oh, you, uh, have, a, you have a sibling, you have a yeah, brother? Yeah, I have a younger brother. Okay. Uh, he is six years younger than me. They had him while I was in first grade, um, and so, you know, he's still a little young when they're starting the divorce process. And so then uh, they stayed living in the same town. So I still stayed in Frankfurt, just moved to a different house and continued my schooling there all the way up. Uh, uh, I went to Frankfurt Middle School, then Frankfurt High School. Um, I was really active in the speech team in high school. Uh, Good. Joined it my high school. Was it a large high school? Uh, no. It, it was What's so you was three grade nine ten or ten eleven and twelve. You went to middle schools. Uh, yeah, so it was uh, elementary school was uh, kindergarten to fifth grade. Oh, okay. Middle school was uh, six seven and eight, and then okay. high school was nine ten eleven. 12. They ch some of these schools they change a little bit. Some oh, yeah. only five and six. Well, you know whatever you fit in. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> sorry. Yep. Um, so yeah, I went to Frankfurt High School, the Frankfurt Hot Dogs, that's the mascot. Um, <laughs> Tell us, they have that contest every year, don't they? That, the hot dog contest? Uh, they in Frankfurt or some kind of a hot they dog? They have the hot dog festival. Yeah, hot festival, right? It's sort of a, it can be a big draw at times. It's kind of funny. You know, they got like the uh, that's been going hot dog on costume. <laughs> yeah. You um, really get carried away with that, right? <laughs> yeah, it can be interesting. Um, yeah. How many ways did you... To dress your hot dog, right? <laughs> I mean, we were from northern Indiana, so we were more <laughs> Chicago style hot dogs. Um, and actually, a lot of the foods that we used to eat, like people down here didn't know what I was talking about, like mastacholi. They didn't know what that was. What is that? Um, it's a pasta dish. Um, it's got like the penne noodles and uh, meats and then pasta sauce and cheese, and you uh, bake it. That's what it is. But yeah, people didn't know what it was. Um, so it's kind of interesting because yeah. my, my family still has sort of the more northern Indiana right, okay. feel. Um, yeah, so the sophomore year in high school, I got involved with the speech team. Uh, I really liked doing that. Uh, I did impromptu my first year, uh, which you have like 30 seconds after they give you a topic to give a speech. And I went to state in that. Uh, so my first year on speech, went to state. And then my second year, I did original oratory, so wrote a speech, and impromptu again. And I went to state again in impromptu. And then my senior year, um, I did uh, original oratory, wrote my own speech, and then 
um, extemporaneous, uh, domestic extemp. So had half an hour to write a speech and I went to state again and actually placed at state this time at 14. So kind of low, that's, but that's I still great. placed it. That's wonderful. <laughs> and um, I was second alternate to nationals for our district, uh, which I really liked the speech team a lot. Uh, that was a big aspect of high school for me. And you put a lot of time and effort in oh, it. Yes, but I you did. got yeah, you got ahead. That's great. Yeah, it was like every uh, every night it <laughs> was spent uh, for extemporaneous. It was going through magazines and newspapers and pulling out articles and making sure they're all organized. And for impromptu, it was practicing topics. Right. You got to do your homework. Yes, right. absolutely. Okay. Um, See what else did I do in high school? I was on the academic Super Bowl team. Uh, I was more into that in middle school. In high school, the speech team sort of took over for my interest, uh, but I was on that team. And I helped with the school newspaper. Uh, I was the design chief. So. Very good. Very yeah. Good. Very good. Lots of little uh, help and things to do. That's great. Yeah. yeah. I, I, tend to keep myself busy, sometimes <laughs> probably too busy, but yeah. And so then sort of my history at Purdue starts in high school. Um, in between my freshman and sophomore year of high school, I did the uh, Howard Hughes Summer Biology Experience. Uh, and so it was like a two week program here. You come, you learn about all sorts of things, you do stuff in the lab, so you get to do things that you wouldn't get to do in high school be, for various reasons. Uh, and so I really enjoyed that program. I came back then the summer between my sophomore and junior year and was able to do research with that program, uh, looking at peroxidase in tomatoes. Uh, and so that was really fun and uh, interesting. Uh, and did you stay, do you stay on campus during the program, or is it just to come every day? Uh, well, because we were from Frankfurt, we drove up uh, because it's half hour, 45 minutes. Sure. But the people from, like, Indianapolis stayed okay. on the dorms. Okay. And so I did that then. Then I got to meet some professors and stuff through that. And also my, who was my biology teacher in high school, um, uh, Mrs. Ball, she brought in a professor who is now the department head of botany and plant pathology, which is my department now. Um, and he talked sort of about what was going on, you know, all the new science and technology in the field of botany and genetics and that sort of thing. And so through meeting with him, I was able to work in his lab the summer between my junior and senior year of high school, great. which was a great experience because I got to see, I got to learn parts of campus, namely the uh, ag side, and I got to uh, know a bit of more about just how things work. So I was much more prepared when I came here, I guess. I didn't have as much of a shock of, oh, this place is huge, and I don't know, you know, right. who these professors are, and that sort of thing. What did, did you come every day then? Yes, oh, okay. I came every day then. Um, so you applied to Purdue? Yeah, I only applied to Purdue uh, because I felt like it had offered me so much right. those three summers. And you were familiar that, with it, and this yeah. is where you wanted to be. Exactly. Okay. I mean, great Why program further, here. Right. Um, I'm majoring in plant biology, and I mean, Purdue's a good uh, right. science biology ag school. Um, I mean, it's big time. And so, yeah, it's a good place to be. And so I only applied here because I was, I was pretty sure I would get in and I felt I had good reasons to go here, and yeah, got well, in. Did you go to Boiler, well, when you came, did you go to Boiler Gold Rush? Yes, I did. Okay. Um, I went to Boiler Gold Rush. Uh, that was a really good experience, uh, because you sort of come in and you're really nervous, and I almost feel like in high school I was very extroverted and everything, and then, you know, you come to college and you barely know anybody. I mean, I knew a couple people from high school, but they, they were, were in, here? yeah, but they were in very different majors and everything. And so you kind of clam up a little because you don't know. And so Boiler Gold Rush sort of gives you the opportunity to break down all those walls again. Like at the beginning, you think all these people are crazy. Like the team leaders are dancing around in the aisles and everything. All and, then, activity, right? yeah. and then on the last day, you join them because you know, right, finally, right. like, 
Yeah. Where did you embrace the, uh, it? For, for first year? Uh, did you uh, live on campus? Yes, I did, okay. and I still do. Okay. Um, I lived in McCutcheon my first year. Uh, I liked McCutcheon. I know a lot of people complain it's too far, but I it's don't really good. think it's that bad. Right. Um, Obviously, you because booth, you got Purdue West right around the corner. Exactly. The street, right? And then I just moved over, and for the past two years, I've lived in Hillenbrand, okay. and I'm going to live in Hillenbrand next year. Uh, so I'll be in the same room for three years, which is okay. kind of fun. Uh, yeah, I mean, I like it. One of the things I like about Hillenbrand is that you can get up, you know, 10 o'clock in the morning is when they start serving meals, and you can get up in your pajamas, and I just walk down the hall. I'm on the first floor, so no stairs or elevators even, it's Very just nice. right down the hall. Yeah. So now your major is, is the, you're in botany and plant pathology? Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, my major is plant biology. Okay. Um, and when I came to Purdue, I thought I was going to go out on genetics and have a very high genetics focus. And there were a few professors I was thinking about uh, talking to, about doing research with my first year here, and so I talked to my academic advisor, and he suggested that, well, look through the faculty research pages again. Maybe you'll see something else that will catch your eye, or maybe you'll realize that you really like one of those professors. And so I did, and I saw uh, Dr. Nancy Emery's work uh, with evolutionary ecology, and I decided that that's what I wanted to try. And so I've been in her lab. Uh, I started working in her lab. The summer after my first year, and I'm still working in it and plan on doing an honors project with her. So, Very nice. Very. Uh, Tell the researchers what an honors project, so that they clarify okay. that. Yeah. Well, for uh, my program, the honors project will be, you take an honors version of the research credits that we can take, and then you have to have something concrete come out of that. So you can write a paper, you can give a seminar, uh, you can present posters at sort of professional things. Um, I've already presented one poster on the research I've done in her lab uh, at the Undergraduate Research Poster Symposium. The one here on Purdue? Yep, good. the one here at Purdue. Uh, that was really good. The experience of making posters, at first it's kind of intimidating, but once you do it, you realize it's, it's not that bad and it's a really nice way to display what you've done. It is. Um, and to be able to talk about it and have it there. You know, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the talking the about what I've done, I, I definitely enjoyed. With the Being in and talking and debate, you're right, right <laughs> up your alley. <laughs> exactly. So, yeah, I worked with her, and I've decided that I want to go into uh, ecology. So it was a great way to sort of realize that maybe genetics wasn't the way I wanted to go and realize what I actually did. It, so okay. it's That's been really nice. Good. Now let's talk about the... Your, the uh, organization, tell the yes. researchers what it is, and then the programs, initiatives, and things that you've taken on. Okay. Well, um, Did, were you a member before, and you were elected this year? Is that yes. How, okay. So okay. I am uh, currently the president of the Queer Student Union, uh, and so I, when I was in high school, a senior in high school, uh, is when I came out. Uh, so I had told my mother between my freshman and sophomore year of high school, I had told the first friend that I was gay um, when I was a freshman in high school, I told her once during lunch. Um, I don't know why I waited so long to tell my mom because I knew she was going to be fine with it. She had always, you know, talked about how, you know, being gay is okay and like pointed out all sorts of different things, whether it's people's diversity in terms of religion or sexual orientation or race or any of that. but. It's just kind of hard, and you don't know when is the right time, I guess, is why it took me that long. Um, and then I told my dad that I was gay the, I think, November of my senior year. Um, my mom and I had gotten into a big fight, um, and I was really upset, and it was his weekend, and so I just told him, and he was fine with it. And so after that, I pretty much came out completely. And so when I was looking at coming to Purdue, uh, I'm first generation college, so I don't exactly know, so I didn't exactly know how housing or any of that worked, so I went to my guidance counselor and asked her, well, I'm gay, is, uh, how does housing work for that? Like, do I need to do anything special? And she's like, no, they, they actually can't ask you about that and that sort of thing. But what she did say is we could call over and see if there's particular dorms that are particularly gay friendly or you know, right. known for being very supportive. So we did, and when we first called Purdue, they said, well, you know, we really can't ask people about that, and 
you know, it's included in our non-discrimination policy, but there's no real sure. administrative stuff. So we'll forward you on to the student organization. And so they forwarded me on to the Queer Student Union. And I talked to them a little, and they were like, there really is no dorm that's, you know, the most gay-friendly of any of them. There's, situ there's things in place for if you feel you have problems. And so I was like, okay, good. So I know I didn't need to do anything special and sure. then proceed to fill out the housing organization, the housing contract. Uh, so I knew that it existed, and I joined its mailing list shortly after that. And that summer is the summer that they released the white paper, which was a, basically they came together, sat down, and decided what were the issues on campus, uh, the queer issues on campus for right now. And so I got to see that before I even came, sort of knew what was going on. And then during BGR, I went to the first interest session. Because uh, this was a student organization that had been on campus for a while. Yes. Okay. Uh, in, it's changed names a lot. Oh, it's okay. had a lot of different names. It's, okay. We think it's been around in one form or another since the 60s. Um, but with name changes, But with lots hard. of name changes, okay. yes. Uh, so the most recent name is the Queer Student Union. Sure. Before that, it was the Les Gay Bi Network. Okay. And I don't know sure. about any of the names before that. Um, and so, like I said, I came. They had an interest session during Boiler Gold Rush, and so I talked to people there and decided that... Yeah, I was excited about joining this. And so then, first day of classes, uh, the Queer Student Union uh, runs with a few other student organizations, um, Delta Lambda Phi, Ally Association, and then joining in this year, uh, Gamma Rho Lambda. Uh, we jointly have a queer resource center. Uh, so since there is no one sponsored by the university, we've come together to form one. And so I hung out there. The first few days of classes, I went to the meetings and just started getting involved. Sure. Okay. And so then uh, when it came time for elections at the end of that first semester, uh, I ran for secretary and got the secretary position and then was secretary for a semester and I really liked it. So I ran for vice president and got vice president and then uh, <laughs> was vice president for another year and then ran for president. And so I've been president this year. Um, Good. On April 19th, we have elections again, and I'm not running for re-election. Um, how I like to put it is that Purdue is a place that feels, a lot of people at Purdue know there needs to be a change. Uh, it's not that Purdue's a bad place. We know there needs to be a change because we love Purdue. I mean, there's a, there's a lot of great things about Purdue. Uh, Purdue began offering me stuff since... I was in high school and it's done a lot of outreach programs and so a lot of us have seen Purdue at its best. And so we know there's lots of ways we can help make Purdue better. But one person can only do that for so long. And we put off a lot to help get that done. And so there's a lot of things that I may have done otherwise that I sort of put off for being president of the Queer Student Union. And so some of those are things I need to get done. I need to you know, really immerse myself in research. I need to, you know, apply to grad school and all these other things. And so... You're, you're reaching to the next next career, uh, step stage in your life. Exactly. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and another great thing about not retiring before you've left the university is the fact that then the next group can ask for help. Uh, because the other two presidents have, before me have also chosen this route. Uh, Claire Ford, when I was a freshman, and Jessica Lee, when I was a sophomore, um, also were not finished when they sure. uh, were it's done nice being president. It's nice for the transition, and I, don't you think exactly. it also helps the incoming to know that there's somebody still on board, that, oh, that yeah. you still work together? Because there's a lot of connections you make, and connections you don't even think about when you're president, and so it really helps the next batch to know that there's somebody who knows some of these people, may know how to deal with some of the issues. Um, and it's always good to have somebody to call on when there's yeah. something going really on. Important. Yes, they yeah. are. Yeah. Um, especially without um, having an actual like professional staff devoted to uh, LGBTQ affairs. It's really important that there's some transition. Um, well, how large is, is your the student organization? Uh, it's okay. really hard to quantify that okay. because we don't keep membership lists okay. and we try to remain confidentiality. Sure. 
But on our email list, we have around 400 people. Our Facebook group has around 300. And event attendances vary, um, anywhere from coffee nights in the 30s and 40s to uh, weekly meetings in the 10s um, and 20s. And then our call-outs um, range in between 100 and 200 people. Um, the biggest event we've put on this year uh, was the professional drag show. Um, and that had 350 people. Um, usually that's put on by our sibling organization, uh, the fraternity Delta Lambda Phi. But due to a series of events, they were unable to host it this year. So sort of the last week they asked us to do it and we pulled together and did it. And that was, that was a lot of work in a very short amount of time. But we really pulled together and we got it done and it turned out well. Um, that's, that's nice to hear. Uh, let's talk a little bit about leadership, uh, leadership in academia and in the career world. Any couple comments or thoughts that you have on that? Okay. Um, I think a, lo a large focus of leadership, at least for me, has been on helping other people. Like I, I've seen a lot of the issues for other people. Uh, a few of the main things that we've worked on this year was we worked uh, closely with student government to get gender identity and gender expression, um, as well as genetic information, added to produce non-discrimination policy. Uh, that was really important because a lot of people were sincerely worried uh, because they didn't know if they were protected or if there would be systems in place to help them if they felt discriminated or harassed. Uh, we're one of, you know, we're a major university and we didn't have it, whereas the vast majority of our peers do. And so that was a, one big focus. Uh, and we got that done in December. It was really great to be at that Board of Trustees meeting when they voted and approved it. Uh, oh, you said we were at the meeting? Yes, I was at the meeting. I would have to say that that was probably one of the best experiences um, for me as a student. Uh, and being the president. Yes, and being the president. During the president uh, year. Yes, exactly. I mean, that was a huge change, and it was really important to a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, We've also worked on things, a lot of what I've focused on are transgender rights issues because I really feel that there's a lot the university could be doing to help people and it's a matter of making the university aware that they need to be moving forward. Mm -hmm. And so housing updated its uh, just student satisfaction survey to uh, change the gender question uh, to include not only male and female but also transgender and other. Uh, so it had been worked on in years past to try and get course evaluations to either take off that question or add on these other two. And so when I was at Westwood uh, for President's Roundtable, which is... You're on uh, that too yes. as well? Okay. Uh, so President's Roundtable is an organization made up of 40 other organizations, and basically the president or representative sits around, uh, they talk with various members about the Purdue community and try to... Know, move Purdue forward, and so from the it's a student voice. Because yes, it's, okay. It, it is a, it's another form of student voice. Right. So you, I mean, you've got student government, you've got president's roundtable, uh, lots of ways to try and get the student perspective. And so at Westwood, um, they meet once a semester with the president of the university at Westwood. And so I asked about uh, the course evaluations, um, and did some talking with a few other administrators and. Uh, this fall, that question was removed. Um, also, other organizations have followed suit after being pointed out that, you know, housing did this amazing change, like the Student Wellness Office added transgender and other to their options. Uh, so that's moving forward. Um, another thing I did was to, two years ago, they had worked on making a list of all the gender-neutral single-use bathrooms on campus. Uh, but they had also mapped all the single-use bathrooms on campus at the time. And a very large number of them were uh, designated male or female. Uh, and for some people, they may be uncomfortable uh, using that designation, whether it be because they're afraid of retaliation from other people or uh, because they don't feel comfortable identifying in that way. Uh, it also just makes more productivity sense. Uh, so you don't have a line for one and nobody for the other. So I talked with the various groups that had been involved in putting that together, and they gave me a name, and I contacted them, and they were like, Oh yeah, we did work on that, and our intention was to make sure that all the single-use bathrooms on campus that could be gender neutral would be, and they got on to updating it, and so soon we will have a new list 
um, with all of those bathrooms and the ones that can be should be uh, gender neutral uh, for academic campus. Okay. Um, and then we'll take that work and try and see if we can translate that into a residential campus. Uh, but that will probably be next year. Okay. Okay. So you've got quite a bit accomplished and you when that coming across to me, you weren't work with people and, and try to get the resources and things of that sort. And yeah, I think uh, and getting to work with the other organizations as well. Right. And the round table brings that to the table for you. Exactly. A, a lot of it really has to be about sort of positive activism, showing how we can be better. Uh, showing that Purdue can be better if it adds gender identity and gender expression to its non-discrimination policy. Purdue can offer better facilities if we make sure that single-use bathrooms that can be gender neutral are. Um, and so highlighting how we can improve, I think, is better than saying, well, why don't we have this? Right. It, yeah. it, it's, it's more positive. Right. Um, positive right. And so, yeah, definitely working together with people. It's all about working together with people, right. really. And talking to the right people, making sure you know who it is you're talking to, building coalitions, uh, with gender identity and expression, building coalitions was really important. So two years ago, uh, my first year on campus, the painted tree that is traditionally painted by uh, two racial minority uh, groups on campus was vandalized. Uh, and just before that, uh, we had painted a window, the Queer Student Union, had painted a window for homecoming uh, as one of the homecoming activities, and our window had been vandalized. And so the groups came together, and we had a rally for you know trying to move forward on diversity issues. And there was something called the Council of Organizations for Respect and Equality that was actually reformed. And so in Purdue Student Government Constitution, there's a two senators allotted to uh, a multicultural um, underrepresented student panel. And so CORE took that over. And on that, it's a number of organizations. The Queer Student Union is one of them. But there's a number sure. of groups representing yeah. uh, racial diversity groups, uh, even political groups, uh, a whole number of organizations. And so we went and talked to them uh, my sophomore year, while I was vice president, about getting trying to work on gender identity and expression. And they were monumental in getting that move forward. And then the work with student government. Uh, student government this year has really focused on policy changes, uh, which I think is really important, because Purdue's an old institution, which is great, but that also means some of its policies are old. Mm, and at things, huh? they need yeah. updated. Um, yeah. And sometimes it's just a matter of, well, we haven't updated this in 40 years, and it's looking a little old. Um, like the honors code and sort of things like that. Some of it's, we didn't think about this at the times the policies were being made, like the bereavement policy. And so the non-discrimination policy was one of those things where other universities have been moving forward and Purdue just hasn't sure. moved forward yet. And so, yeah, that coalition with student government was definitely important in getting that change made. They, um, we kept talking about it, they kept talking about it, and the change happened. How about uh, hobbies, special interests, nice. anything special? Um, between school and yeah, research. Yeah, I understand, and, right. Like, um, I mean, I like yeah. to do a variety of things. things. Yeah, right. absolutely. Um, when I have time, which school doesn't necessarily give you a lot of time, <laughs> um, I really like to read science fiction and fantasy books. Um, but yeah, during school, I'm not very good about uh, you enjoy reading working, many. You, but you enjoy working in the lab, don't you? Oh, yes, I do. Um, you, like I mean, hand, you like that. Yeah, I've worked in the lab for a while. I like it. I like trying to figure things out. Um, recently, we've started doing a lot more field work uh, with the uh, wildflower here, uh, Spring Beauty, which is Claytonia virginica. And so it's been a lot of going out in the field and finding it and seeing where it is and seeing what other plants that it is. And it's really nice to sort of be outdoors and see what's going on and what's happening. Uh, well, that sounds so, good. Okay. Do you have a Purdue tradition that uh, you share with us? Sometimes people think of Boilermaker Special, or and sometimes some retirees, and they say, well, they're like, commencement is nice. you know. So if you have it, or anything special? Well, one fun thing is that our office is next to the Reamers. Okay. Um, and so the Reamers is sort of a Purdue spirit organization. That's the Boilermaker Special, yeah, right? <laughs> exactly. And um, so what I'm going to talk about in specific, they 
do a lot of things like singing, produce songs, and everything, <laughs> well, which is really funny, and our office being next to theirs, we get to hear a lot of them, especially when they're uh, doing, I think they pledge or something like that, and so there's a lot of like this singing that goes on. And so we brought the Vice President of Student Affairs, um, Dr. Exum, to one of our meetings, and it was one of the meetings during that time period when they're trying to get new in reamers room, ready in, your room downstairs. in our office. Okay. Yes, because our offices, the ceilings don't go all the way up, and I mean, not the ceilings, the uh, walls. The walls don't go all the way up, and there's a little crack in the bottom. So it's basically a giant wall, with, a giant room with temporary walls. And so they're singing throughout much of our meeting, uh, which was hilarious. And, Actually, it, it was good that that happened because it let you know our the new vice president of student affairs know you know sort of where student organizations are housed and some of the issues with the, the fact that we're housed is you know we're having a meeting and they're having a meeting at the same time and there's involves a lot of singing. That sounds good. Uh, like, the next, the next, what they should have done is bring in the warm up for special at the, at the, the end of the meeting. meeting right? Yeah. Oh, I love when it's in the hallway. Like because sometimes they'll have it in the hallway downstairs. Uh, and so you've got like this vehicle in the hallway in the basement of Stewart. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. How about an outstanding event? Did anything come to mind? You probably oh, had more, more than one. <laughs> there are a lot of really great things that happen on campus. Um, or sometimes even before you came, like coming to high school, getting, yeah. getting inducted. Uh, you uh, addressed that earlier, and that, that's pretty exciting. You know, a lot oh, yeah. of people don't get that opportunity. Yeah, like you said, the, the Howard Hughes Summer Biology Experience, that was definitely a great experience. Um, I think that's important for Purdue uh, sure, right. to make sure to continue programs like that. Uh, outreach oh, yeah. programs are really important for getting people excited about coming here. Um, right. And what it has to offer. And the yeah. very, you know, that, you're right, exactly. Oh, that sounds good. Now, uh, the next stage post Purdue, what are your, tell us what your summer plans are, and then hopefully after you graduate. Okay. Well, uh, this summer I've got an internship with the Echinacea Project, um, and so that is in western Minnesota. It's a prairie restoration project, a long term study. And is it not started already? I mean, is it ongoing? Yes, it's okay. ongoing. It's. I want to say 13 years old, oh, okay. uh, but I'm not sure the exact number. And so um, I'll be going out there, and part of what I'll do is be working on the existing projects. So they've got plants that they've been following uh, since sure. they've been planted. Uh, they've got a number of experiments they've been repeating over the years to see sort of the effects of habitat fragmentation on these prairie restoration, um, and specifically the plant um, Echinacea augustifolia, which is a type of coneflower. Um, and so part of it, my work will be helping them on what they've been doing. And then another part is that I get to come up with my own research project. And so I'll be doing that uh, as well. And it also sounds like for a little while, I'll be able to go to the Chicago Botanical Garden, um, which will be really great. Uh, uh, and part of why I'm really excited about going to the Chicago Botanical Garden is I've sort of been trying to figure out where I want to go from here. Um, you know, when I first came to Purdue, I wanted to be a professor and everything. And I still think that would be a great way to go, but I don't think that's the only way. Um, but I really know that where I want to go is going to involve some level of education or outreach. Um, I really have liked explaining things to people, um, working with people on moving through uh, issues, on understanding concepts, and so I know education is part of what I want to do. And so that can be through sort of the more outreach education that is done by museums and botanical yeah. gardens, or it could be through the more traditional institutions like the universities or uh, community colleges even. So okay. being able to be there and sort of see what's going on might help me further uh, make that decision. Um, so currently I plan on applying next year to grad school. Um, I'm probably going to do a master's first before I commit fully to the PhD. Um, I I talked to a number of professors before sort of coming to that decision because it's that's kind of a big decision. Do I commit straight off to a PhD? Uh, do I do a master's first? Uh, especially because there's some overlap uh, in what you would have to do and everything. And so I talked to a number of people and it seems like uh, master's is 
the best way to go first. Um, so. And then sometimes you might want to, after you do that, get a job or do something and then continue with the PhD. It, oh, absolutely. It varies. It varies. Oh, yeah. Uh, it varies one of the things the that uh, I've thought about some, uh, like the Peace Corps, uh, I really like sort of the idea of, you know, helping uh, with education uh, and being able to live in another country and actually live there. Um, I actually have not had the opportunity to leave the United States yet, um, and I definitely want to. Uh, but I think it would be neat to have that immersive experience. Right. Uh, That's a possibility. So yeah, potentially a job after grad school, potentially uh, going on to PhD. There's a lot of things that uh, could occur after that master's. Okay, so. we'll keep in touch. Yes. Anything I forgot to ask, or do you think that, do you think uh, we covered most of it? Anything you want to say in closing? Uh, I think we covered a lot. Um, I think it's great that, you know, sort of what's happening at Purdue is documented. Uh, one thing that uh, has been sort of interesting with the Career Student Union is the fact that, like, a lot of people are in the closet. Um, you know, for various reasons, not able to be open about who they are. Uh, and so record keeping has been interesting. Um, we have some archives, but, you know, they're not nearly as complete as we would like them to be. And so things have changed a lot. Um, what it means to be gay at Purdue has changed a lot, just like what it means to be a student at Purdue has evolved over time. And so, yeah, it's really important that all of that is kept track of, and I'm really glad that you invited wow. me to do this interview. I thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Okay.